Hey everyone, it's Sensei Ron Thomas, founder of the Mastery Bootcamp, author of Positive Thinking is for Sissies, and today, in this video, I want to share with you exactly why I can get on stage, make a complete fool of myself, and get away with it. <laughs> you know, recently, I posted a little clip on social media of me doing some martial arts moves on stage during a, one of my motivational speeches at a company. And, you know, I busted out a little Bobby Brown, I did, some, I did a kick, I did a punch, and then, of course, I, I went into the little wimpy Daniel LaRusso move with the crane kick, and people loved it. Um, and people loved it on social media. The audience loved it when I did it, and, and people loved it on social media. Um, and, uh, you know, then I had a lot of questions. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> You're just throwing out martial arts moves because you can? Because you go by Sensei Ron Thomas? Well, that's one reason. I'm, I go by Sensei Ron Thomas when I'm doing my personal development training and motivational speaking, and, um, and I am a true sensei. That's one reason. You know, and the other reason is, of course, I was blessed to be in the movie The Karate Kid and play that role, Bobby Brown. Um, I'm an original Cobra Kai. So... Those are obvious reasons why I would do that in a speech, right? Some entertainment value for the audience. But what's beyond that? What am I really doing on stage when I bust out those moves? It can't just be for entertainment value, right? And so many, a lot of people had questions on social media. They would hit me up and say, hey, what, what's behind that? What's behind those moves? What do you, I, they're cool. It's fun. But what are you talking about at that point in your speech? And so I thought I'd share with you exactly what I'm talking about at that point in my speech. So it really speaks to uh, one of my core messages is choosing mastery over mediocrity. And I lead into that by talking about a couple of books that I've written. One is The Best You Can Sucks, Five Reasons Why and What to Do About It. And another one is Positive Thinking is for Sissies. And I talk a little bit about my perception and why, besides being kind of fun titles, um, why the best you can really does suck. Most people are doing the best they can, right? But here's why it sucks. Because when it's compared to your potential, what you're really capable of, the best you can sucks. Your potential, your capabilities, your true potential never sucks. What you're really capable of, most people don't even know because they've never put themselves to the test what their true potential is in any given situation. Um, the best you can is what people default to. I'm, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I really, I, I tried to accomplish this. I tried to win that race. I tried to do this. I tried to cross the finish line. I had these goals. I tried to achieve them. I achieved some of them, I, you know, and I just, I did the best I could. When the truth is, probably not. You probably didn't do the best you could. And... And I know why. There, I mean, there's several reasons why, but let me give you one example. All of us have limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'm not capable. I'm not enough. Um, I'm unlovable. I don't deserve it. I'm unworthy. And these are unconscious limiting beliefs that people hold. And if that's the filter, if those are the set of glasses that you're looking at your world through, then what does your best look like through the, that set of glasses? If you were to take off that set of glasses and put on your capability glasses, your potential, your full potential, what is the best you can look like now? It's two different views of your own reality, of your own world. Um, but one of the main reasons the best you can sucks is because it's determined by your mood and your mood goes up and down. Your mood fluctuates. You know, let me give you an example. If you're on a mission to lose weight and the only time you have to go work out, to go to the gym, to go get some exercise is five in the morning and you set the alarm clock for five o'clock in the morning, what happens when the alarm clock goes off? Another part of you shows up. That's the part that wants to hit the snooze button. That's the part that wants to shut the alarm clock off and stay in bed, right? Now you got two parts of yourself battling. One wants to lose weight, get up, go to the gym, get in shape, and the other one wants to hit the snooze button. Depending on your mood in the moment is going to determine which part wins the argument. So the best you can is determined by your mood, it fluctuates, it's determined by what you feel like doing and what you think you can get away with doing. What you feel like doing and what you think you can get away with doing have to do with wanting things to be comfortable and easy. 
And I got to tell you, in all of my athletic endeavors, in all of my endeavors in life, be it uh, in the most competitive town on the planet in Hollywood or, you know, training as a martial artist or a swimmer or a golfer or anything else that I've wanted to do, winning has nothing to do with comfort and ease. <laughs> in fact, winning has everything to do with being uncomfortable and hard, difficult. Training is hard. It's difficult. And so you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Positive thinking is for sissies is because I didn't say positive thinking is a bad thing. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we should all think positive. But it's for sissies if that's your strategy for winning. Because it's kind of like, you know, there's a silver lining in every cloud. When one door closes, another one opens. You know, everything always works out for the best. Great frames of mind, but they've got nothing to do with winning, really, except to keep you feeling good in the moment. So I think you know, that can't be your, your only strategy for winning. So I kind of lead with these topics into, um, into a little bit more detail, right? And so I, I bring up this slide with this picture of this guy getting choked out. And I say, you can't positive think your way out of the issues that are off balancing you, off balancing you in life, choking off your success and knocking out your capacity for excellence. You can't positive think your way out of those things. You can be a positive thinker and still be broke. You could be a positive thinker and still have a diagnosis. You could be a positive thinker and still be going through a bankruptcy or a divorce. Or you can be a positive thinker and still lose the race. You got to have more to, more to life, more to you if you want to win at life or anything else that you're doing in life than just positive thinking. This guy is not thinking there's a silver lining in this. That's not what's on his mind. He's got to do something. That leads me into issues. Well, what are the issues that are choking us off? What are the issues that are choking off our success, off balancing us, throwing us, knocking out our capacity for excellence? And those issues are right here. And I don't know if you can see them, but I'll read a few of them. They're accountability issues, anger, anxiety, boredom, uh, clarity issues, communication issues, procrastination, resentment, sadness, self-sabotage, stagnation, stress, toxic environment, unconscious, you know, unconsciousness, basically, victimhood, right fighting, numbness. Right fighting is, you know, the people who have a need to be right. Even when they know they're wrong, they still got to fight to be right because they're right. They're just always right. You know, these things are choking off your ability they're well, they're choking off your potential, basically. And so I, I talk about these issues. And then, of course, I bust into the moves because I tell the audience, you know, I, it's like um, we're sparring. What are the things you're daily, you're sparring with? These things. These things, are not, not all of them, but, but by and large, almost everybody has one or two or three or five or six of these that they're spar with on a daily basis. I call them your inner opponents. And they show up consciously or unconsciously and mostly unconsciously for people. They show up and they're kicking your butt. They're kicking our butts. And they're taking out our capacity for excellence and our capacity for winning and our capacity for doing our potential. So guess what? We default to doing the best we can instead, right? And, and so what's the answer? It can't be therapy. You know, it can, it can be for some people, but it, you know, it can be something bigger than that. And that's, that's why I lead into mastery over mediocrity, choosing mastery over mediocrity. And I talk about the five core traits of a master and why when you choose mastery, you start to rise up and out of those issues. You start to become more than those issues. There's five core traits of a master. Love is one of them. A master comes from a place of love. They love what they do. You can't be, you know, a masterful, you can't be a master pianist and, and, and not love the, the piano and not love playing the piano and not love music. You won't let yourself master that instrument if you don't love it. You won't ma let yourself master yourself if you don't find a way to love yourself. Masters come from a place of love. And a lot of masters, especially like, like my background coming from the martial arts, they love their students and they love teaching and they love imparting 
um, knowledge that is going to help their students become better. And if they don't love it, they'll never master it. They'll never master the art of teaching. If they don't love the martial arts, they'll never master the art of whatever art style that they are training in. Karate, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo, Aikido, you know, on and on. So they come from a place of love. They're precise. And since I'm talking about martial artists, here's what I mean. A master, if a master wants to hit you right here, a master is going to hit you right here. The amateur, the white belt, is going to hit you over here, like on the clavicle or the chest or the jaw, but they're not going to hit you here. And there's going to be two different results from that one impact, from that one shot. So masters are very precise. Master communicators are very precise in their language and, their, and the words that they choose, right? Masterful parents are very precise in their parenting. And they're very, of course, intentional about, a masterful parent is intentional about their parenting, intentional about the time that they spend with their child and how they want that time to go. Um, many people who are not masterful are not intentional. They don't set intentions for themselves. They don't set intentions for the situation that they're walking into or about to walk into. They don't set intentions for their day and how they want their day to go. They just kind of get up in the morning and bumble through the day but not masters. People who are more masterful at life and living set an intention and set intentions through and throughout their day, their month, their week, their year, the situation that they, they're in, that they want to be in. So be more intentional is my point, right? Expanded consciousness. Masters have a way of seeing what's not being shown, of hearing what's not being said. They have an expanded awareness, a kind of a 360 degree view of life um, and, and expanded consciousness. And here's what I mean by that. Because when you're walking the path of mastery, it's kind of walking up that mastery mountain. And I'm not sure that any of us ever arrive at the top. You know, a master, what is that? A true master? I don't know. I think there's always more to do, always more to be, always more to learn. All, you can always be better. So I think that path just keeps going upward and onward. I'm not sure how many people in life have ever really reached the top because once you think you're at the top, there's always more to go, right? So, but when you're, when you're walking up that path, you, you get a different perspective of life. You can see more. There's a better, there's a bigger view, an expanded awareness of life. And you rise up and out of those issues that I put on the screen a second ago procrastination, uh, self-sabotage, anger, anxiety, sadness, depression, guilt, shame, I mean, on and on. You saw the list. You rise up and out of those issues, but when you start walking that path, when you choose mastery over mediocrity, and you, you don't want a mediocre life anymore, you want a more masterful life, you want more out of life, you want to be more, have more, do more, become more, you start walking that path, those issues show up initially. But the deal is you're more conscious of them. Because if positive thinking is for sissies, then mastery is for warriors. And, and the reason why it's for warriors is because, for, first of all, it causes you to look in the mirror and own your crap. You got to own your stuff. And that is some of the stuff you got to own. And it's painful to look at. And it's tough to spar with those issues on a daily basis. But you know, when you do, you're choosing mastery, not positive thinking. So if, ma if positive thinking is for sissies, mastery is for warriors, but those issues will show up when you start walking that path of mastery. And that's where I lead into the sparring, right? Oh, it's like, oh, oh, here comes anxiety. Okay, anxiety. Yeah. You know, and then I throw a kick at doubt. And then I, I do, a, do the crane kick usually on fear because fear is one of the biggest things that stops us from being more masterful and stops us from accomplishing a lot of things that we would love to accomplish in life. And so um, that's how I end up doing those things on stage and talking about mastery over, over mediocrity. Um, and inner power uh, is the last one. Inner power is a really cool topic because masters develop and cultivate a sense of inner power. And, and, and I don't mean that in a um, condescending way or an egotistical way, they just they, they choose empowerment and they come from a place of power that allows them to let things happen for them rather than force things happen. It's kind of power over force. 